Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now. Here I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host between Taramina's and Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on Local Voice on SoundCloud and those watching Oriented Oriented Television. A lot to look at this week here on the podcast. Um, We're going to look a lot of... um, we got some football news to talk about here. Obviously, um, new coach at Southfield Arts and Tech, um, Curtis McKenzie, taking over. We're going to talk that coming up, and also we're going to talk about some several um, several events that came um, around this past week. So, really, a lot to look at here on this week's edition of the podcast. Um, I know we're in the thick of spring sports season. We're also going to recap um, Clarkston's um, soccer win against Rochester. Um, and where does that go from here for Rochester? Um, there's some question marks now with the Falcons, um, you know, considering what happened to them in that game against Clarkston where where they were just like, um, you know, you just couldn't figure out what happened in that game. But a lot to look at. Um, let's look at our main story here. Um, obviously, it's at Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, Curtis McKenzie is the new head coach at Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, he takes over for... Um, for um, Aaron Marshall, of course, Aaron Marshall now is at Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, <laughs> and, you know, when you look at McKenzie's resume, um, obviously it was at Ball State as the football, I mean, like, um, he was at Ball State. Um, he played in the NFL. He's won a Super Bowl championship. Um, so when you really look at, you know, and he's walking into a program who's just won a Division One state championship, um, it's got a lot of questions everywhere. Of course, last year's team, when you look at the Warriors, they won it all. They were a senior heavy team. And now you bring in a, a, a guy who, um, yes, he's got a ton of NFL experience, but now you're basically starting over from scratch. So, you know, and when you look at McKenzie's pedigree, it's a huge deal. I mean, it's it's like an attention getter because you really look at what he brings to the fold. I mean, he's going to bring, um, he'll bring some calmness to him. He'll bring some, he'll bring some, a lot of, um, he'll bring a lot of energy with him. Um, I'll be curious to see how his coordinators are going to work. Um, I'm curious to see how, what offense he's going to run. I'm very curious to see what he's going to do. Um, but when I look at a and um, a lot of questions for a and is can Southfield Arts and Tech, can they, um, replicate the success they had under Marshall? And do I think are they going to do that this year? Probably not, because this is going to be a whole complete different team, a whole complete different system. And you really look at with a and as, can this team, I mean, like, uh, do I think they're going to replicate it this year? Probably not. Um, but I think when you look at A&T, it's can they put a competitive product on the field? And I think that's going to be the question mark coming in for Southfield Arts and Tech is can they put a competitive product? And I think really when you look at the starting off with the schedule, McKenzie doesn't have a week one opponent yet. I mean, they don't have a week one yet. I mean, you really look at the last few years under Marshall, they played Detroit Cast Tech week one. Now with McKenzie there, you know, it's not likely they're going to play Detroit Cast Tech. And, you know, and that schedule is still brutal enough when you look at having to play teams like Groves, Harper Woods, um, West Bloomfield's on that schedule. Um, so there's going to be a really difficult environment here for a t Like, you're going to have a transition period. And unfortunately for them, it's going to have to happen during this season. And, you know, when you look at any time you have a new coach, you're he's going to bring in his style of play, his offense. Um, you don't know what type of offense they're going to have. Yes, they're going to have athletes at Southfield, but you don't know if they're going to run the RPO. You don't know if they're going to run a spread. Um, you kind of like know what he's going to want, but line play, trench play, that's going to be question mark. How's your defense going to look? I mean, there's so many questions, 
And that's not even counting program strength for Coach McKenzie. And I think that's going to be the question mark I have with A&T is can they put together a competitive product? I mean, that is the big time question for A&T is can they put together a competitive product? And I think that's going to be the key for A&T going forward is can they put together a competitive product? And, you know, you look, you're in a division with Harper Woods. Um, obviously, they are the Division Four state champions. They got a lot kept coming back. You look at you're in a division with Groves. They got a lot coming back. Um, you look at Stony Creek, who comes from the red. Yes, they got a new coach, but they got a really good offensive lineman in Spencer Beekman. Um, and then you look at Rochester. Um, you know, and Rochester's always a team that's well coached under Coach Eric Vernon, um, despite the numbers that they get. So, you know, they're gonna have a challenge. I think for A and T, they're gonna have a very challenging time. Um in this division, um, and obviously with Curtis McKenzie taking over, it's going to come down to is can they build program strength? That is the big question I have for a and is can this team build around program strength? And if they don't, then it's going to spell trouble because with a and you know, they don't have the numbers, but... They'll find talent over there at A&T. They'll find talent. Um, they're barely in Division One. I. I think they're the last team in Division I um, for um, the postseason. And when I look at that schedule, I don't know if this team's going to get to the postseason, considering what they got to play. Um, so when I look at A&T, I mean, yes, you got to play West Bloomfield. And you know you're coming off... Um, you're coming off that um, state semifinal win against them last year. Um, but like I said, it's a much different A&T team that people are going to get used to seeing. And it's going to take a little while, I think, for them to adjust to that. And I think that's the big question I have for A&T is can they, you know, at least be competitive? I mean... That's the challenging point here for Southfield. And I've mentioned this many times is, you know, a lot of teams, when they go through a tough rebuild, this is going to be a rebuild over at A&T because you look at what Marshall did. He put together a great four-year plan. And you look at, of course, the quarterback. He had Isaiah Marshall. That's um, Marshall's nephew. Um, you look at, of course, the running game. I mean, they had a great running running attack, great receivers. I mean, will he look into bringing in kids, um, bringing in transfers? Um, will you? Will he look into trying to build within the program? I mean, there's so many questions with Southfield that I don't know I can even answer. I mean, because of, you know, it's going to be a really interesting changeover this fall with a t is can they handle you know can they can they handle that transition period and that's a challenge for coach mckenzie now yeah mckenzie's um you know football pedigree that's going to bring a lot of people involved but he's going to have to put together a staff the coordinators are the key um i mean like and then you got to look at of course who's i mean then you got to take a look obviously of course Who's going to be, you know, you know, obviously committed to build that team? I mean, that team's going to have to go. That program is going to have to go through a rebuild, um, which that's not going to be an easy challenge for McKenzie. And I think, you know, schedule they have coming up with the, they only got eight games right now, which is really unusual for them because, you know, normally a t they like to play nine games. I mean, you look at, of course, people look at the division with a and I mean, you look at, I mean, you look at, um, I mean, you look at the division, you look at, um, you know, what the, what the teams, the rivalries that they're in, obviously, you look at teams like Oak Park, um, you look at, um, you know, obviously, we know that rivalry there, um, you look at, um, you know, for Southfield, it kind of really reminds you of, you know, you got to look at what A&T is. Can the Warriors build around, um, can they um, can they put together a competitive product? I mean, that's really, and I've said this many times, 
and uh, but that's going to be the that's going to be the challenge for McKenzie is, you know, can they put together a competitive product? Can they shock people? And I'm pretty much knowing what I'm going to hear at media day is they're going to say we're going to shock the world, we're going to surprise some people, even though we're down this year. Um, but they're going to surprise some people, and I hope that they do because. There's going to be some question marks when I look at a and is how do I, exp- how do you explain, you got the quarterback situation, a question mark, rushing attacks, a question mark, line plays, a question mark, defense, a question mark. I mean, everything is a question mark for that team. You know, they lost everybody from that team. They lost everybody from that Division One state championship team. So how are you going to replace the talent? You know, it's not going to be an easy thing for A&T. Um, and then program strength for them is going to be a challenge for A&T because you look at that team, program strength, you look at what them, it's going to come down to is can A&T, you know, replenish that talent pool? I mean, we don't know what the middle school level looks like for them. We don't know, you know... <laughs> How the system's gonna work down over there, Auntie? We don't know how it's gonna work. Um, of what athletes are gonna come out and play? I mean, there's so many question marks for Coach McKenzie and the Warriors that I don't know if there's gonna be, you know, if this team can figure it out. If this team can figure it out quickly, then I think A&T could surprise people. But when I look at them right now. In the white, I would have to say right now, a and right now would be, you know, I I would have them maybe below Rochester right now. I think right now, if I had to do like an early, way too early projection right now, I would have to say Harper Woods is the favorite in the white. Then it's Groves. Then it's Stony Creek. Then, um, you know, and then, um, I mean, like then Rochester. Um, and then, um. You know, so I look at, and I think Blue Bay Hill's in that division. So, you know, so when I look at that division, um, there's a lot of question marks for um, coming in. And I think there's, for a team like a t who just came off losing everybody. I mean, they lost everybody. And they're going to have a difficult ahead of them. I mean, you still got to play... You know, Groves, Harper Woods, obviously Stony Creek, Rochester, um, and then you have to play West Bloomfield's on that on that schedule. I mean, it is going to be extremely difficult for A and T going forward. It's going to be really difficult to see how that team, um, how they're going to figure that out. And I think there's a lot of question marks with A and T going forward. And I think that's going to be the key. For them next year, I mean, for them this fall, and I think that's going to be the key for them this upcoming season. So, a lot to look at with A&T. A lot of question marks for them. So, my take on the McKenzie hire, um, you know, it's a really interesting hire because McKenzie has an NFL pedigree. He, I'm not sure what the connection he has to Southfield. Um, You know, he coached at Ball State. I think he spent some time at Wayne State as well. Um, but when you look at you're hiring a proven experienced coach, you know you're going to get college experience. You know that he's seen the entire game. He's been around the college game. He's been around the NFL game. I mean, he knows what it takes to bring in these kids and get them recruited to go to top colleges. I mean, you look at Southfield. Southfield's been known for is bringing in D1 kids and they bring in D1 juggernauts, you know what I mean? Like proven D1 talent and you bring in that type of talent, you know, then it's important for you to produce results. And, you know, you look at last year with A&T, you know, the success that they've had, they've had a lot of, a lot of setback. Um, but now they're on a, upward trajectory and I think with A&T um, <laughs> it's going to come down to his con- 
South Bay Arts and Tech um, handle, um, can they handle, um, you know, going through that coaching change and then going through that transition period, which unfortunately for them has to happen during the season. So we'll see what happens with them. And I think, and I wish Coach McKenzie the best of luck going forward. And I also wish a and um, you know, it'll be very interesting to see how this how they do. I mean, obviously, you look at, of course, the um, the the coaching change around the OA. Obviously, you look at with them, um, you know, Stony Creek with them, um, Rick Powell taking over for Coach Nick Merlo. Um, when I look at the Stony Creek situation, you know, you look at them and say to yourself, okay, I mean, they're kind of in the same situation as Stone as um as South is kind of in the same situation as Stony is. So. You know, you look at what Powell's got ahead of him. He's got a difficult challenge ahead of him over there at Stony Creek, considering, you know, you got that parent base over there um, who is pretty rabid. Um, but they know, um, but there's some question marks with Stony Creek. Is Can the Cougars, you know, is can they find a way, you know what I mean, you know, to navigate what life is in the white, um, you know, and then, of course, you have a proven player in Spencer Beekman playing on both sides of the football. Um, also, for them, the other question for Stony Creek is going to be, who's your quarterback going to be? Um, how's your running back situation going to be? Um, how's your um, your defense? I mean, like, there's a lot of questions and a lot of challenges that Coach Rick Powell is going to have to deal with um, with Stony Creek. Um, you know, when it comes into the fall year, fall season is, He's going to have a difficult, tall task ahead of him. Um, and it's similar to what Curtis McKenzie's going to have over at Southfield. Is can they overcome and adjust, you know? You know, can they handle the transition period? I mean, that's the big question. It's, if that happens, um, then, I think, then I think both coaches are going to do very well. Um, obviously, you look at, you know, the differences that both McKenzie and Powell been through. Of course, Powell, of course, was at Lake Orion as a defensive coordinator. Um, very curious to see how he does as a head coach. Um, and then on the other side, McKenzie, you know the experience he's had at Ball State. Um, also uh, playing in the NFL. So a lot of tasks ahead of him. So we'll see what happens there with um, both of them. So when you look at, of course, the new coaches in the OAA, um, only two this year. Um, when you look at um, Rick Powell at Stony Creek and then also... Um, now Calvin McKenzie, Adam, Southfield Arts and Tech. So it'll be very interesting to see how both of them do um, coming in this season. And I think it'll be something to really, really watch for um, with A&T. So, you know, so a lot of interesting storylines with A&T. Um, also some interesting storylines with Stony Creek. So a lot of interesting um, dynamics. And we'll see what happens. Um, you know, before I talk soccer, I, I, I did look at the track standings. Um, I did look at the track standings early on. Um, obviously, when I look at track, um, you know, I read this site on Twitter. And, you know, I mean, like, it's not athletic.net. Um, it's a different site. Um, but it's on Twitter. And they ranked Oak Park's boys number two to start the year. I'm going like, really? I mean, I know Coach Giles does a really good job with the program, but I don't know if that, I don't know if I would rank Oak Park like ahead of Adams or, or somebody. I think Adams, when I look at them, um, I think Adams is really solid this year. Um, Clarkston's going to be good this year. Um, I like where they're at this year with Clarkston. Um, so when I look at, when I look at Oak Park, Last season, I know the girls were very good, and they were they were good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they had a lot of proven talent on that team. They were well coached. Um, but I think with them, um, I think with them, I think Oak Park, um, really, you know, I really think the Knights are going to be a team that you know they could surprise some people, but. When I look at their dual meet record, it's not great. I mean, usually what Giles does, and I know he focuses a lot on um, invitationals and um, also the regional. 
Um, so when you really look at and when you really look at it here with that philosophy, I'm not a big fan of that philosophy for a couple reasons. Because you look at a course, you're just basically saying to yourself, you know, and basically that's what I think that's what he's saying. He's basically saying like, you know what? I don't care about the league. I just want to win these invitationals, and I want to win state. I want to win regional. I want to get the best athletes available and win at me a state title. Done that. It's been proven. Um, you know, you look at what he's done in the girls. What Oak Park did in the girls. I mean, they ended up winning a state title in the girls last year. So it'll be interesting to see how Oak Park is. I mean, you look at a team like Clarkston. Clarkson's loaded this year. You look at what they got. I mean, the boys, they got sprinters. They got field events. I mean, they got distance. I mean, they're solid. They are a solid group. You know, and then when you look on the girls' side, Rochester's a team to beat in that and in, in the girls' side. Um, so when I look at Rochester, I think the Falcons, they're a team that they could do some. They're going to make some noise. I think Rochester girls track, they got balance. High on Lucy Cook. Um, so we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I think Clarkson's a team that, um, you know, Rochester's a team that could be really, really dangerous. And I think they'll be a scary, scary group. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, but when I look at Oak Park, you know what I mean, on both girls and boys, um, they're solid. Um, but a team I was really curious to see how this was, was Groves. And I'm looking at Groves, I'm going like, really? I mean, I'm looking at them and I'm saying to myself, okay. I mean, Groves, it looks like they got some dis they got some sprinters. I mean, they got some sprinters. Um... And I think they've done a good job with their distance. They got enough field events. Um, so they're another team to really keep an eye on. But I looked at them and they were ranked sixth to start. I'm going like, what? How? I'm going like, how is that possible? I mean, you look at Groves. I mean, the fact that you have Seaholm there, we know what, what power they've been in the distance. Um, and then you look at, you have West Bluefield right in their backyard. Um, you know, so this could be Groves' year. I don't know. This could be their year. So it'd be really interesting to see how Groves does. Um, let alone if they can make no, I mean, let alone make some noise this year in their regional. It would be very interesting to see if they make some noise in the regional. Um, it'd be interesting to watch. So. I think it'll be interesting to see how Groves um, does, um, you know, when I look at the Falcons um, going forward. And I think now when I look at Groves, um, they could surprise some people. I mean, they could really surprise some people, um, make some noise. I mean, we'll see. I mean, we will see with them. But I think but it was really surprising for me to see Groves ranked. Um, they were ranked in the um, top, um, you know, they were ranked. And that was shocking to see. I was really surprised to see that. So we'll see how that, we'll see how that, how they do. I mean, we'll really, we will really will see how they do. But it, that was surprising to me to see that Groves was ranked in, in the sites poll. And, you know, that they can make some noise this year. So that was just mind boggling to me. And I was really surprised when I saw that. So we'll see. Um, I, I looked at the girls' soccer rankings, and here's where I'm going to get involved with girls' soccer. Because, and obviously, Troy Athens is ranked number two in the state for soccer. You got Stony Creek is ranked. You got, you got um, Adams there. You got, um, you know, you got um, Rochester there. But Rochester is an interesting story for me. Because when I look at Rochester, you look at them and say, okay, last season, ranked number one in the state. Um, you know, you, you, you're coming off a, it's kind of like this, 
redemption year for them. Um, you know, kind of what, after what happened last year when they lost to Stony Creek in the district final. Stony Creek ended up going on to win the Division One state championship in girls soccer. Um, and they played Clarkston and lost 1-0. And when I look at Clarkston, you know, Clarkston's a team, they're, they're not a bad team. I mean, they're not bad. But when I look at the Wolves and they go in, in, Roche in the Rochester's place and win there, that's stunning. That is absolutely stunning for me to see that. Because considering you have one of the best goaltenders in the state in Alice Max, we know how good of a basketball player she is. Um, you do have a girl in Kylie Robinson who also plays soccer. Um, I mean, you got others on that team, but for them to go down to Clarkston the way they did in that game, I mean, that's just absolutely shocking because, you know, you look at Rochester last year. This was a team that went undefeated last year. This was a team that ran the table. They won the red. And to lose to Clarkston, now Clarkston's in the white this year. And for them to lose that, um, you kind of like, it kind of like, for them, it's kind of like a head scratcher. Um, you know, Stony Creek, they had some struggles in their in their games. Um, but, you know, when you look at what happened to Rochester, um, losing that type of game to Clarkston, um, that kind of like gets you like your head scratching a little bit. I mean, it really does. Um, and then, of course, there's Lake Orion. Um, I'm trying to figure this team out because when I look at the Dragons, um, they have some experience. Yes, they're going through a coaching transition. I mean, with Amanda Hutchinson taking over that program. But when I look at Lake Orion, I think this is the team that's better than what their record says. Um, they had a very tough loss to Davison. Um, where, um, you know, I, what ha I don't know what happened that second half. Um, they just have not been the same team since that Davidson game. I mean, they had a really tough loss to Groves. Um, and then you lose a heartbreaker to Oxford. You're up 2-1 to one with five minutes to go, and you lose 3-2. So, I don't know how to describe Lake Orion right now when... This team's had a lot of bad luck against them. I mean, I, I just can't figure this team out because, you know, and I'm being honest here. I mean, like, this team, they should be better than the record indicates, but I just can't figure them out. Is it the transition period? Is it that they're giving up critical? I don't know what their problem is in the second half. I mean, like, you know, second half against Davison. I don't know about what happened against um in the last five minutes against Oxford. Now Oxford this year, they're a solid team this year. They're a good team. Um they had that tough loss early in the year to Macomb, Dakota. Um, but they knocked off um but anytime you knock off your arch rival in Lake Orion, that kind that says that kind of tells the whole story. So Lake Orion's a team I'm trying to figure out right now what's going on with them. I mean I just don't know what's going on with them. I mean, obviously, you look at that team. They have a ton of proven experience on that team. I mean, you have a solid goaltender in Kylie Kapinski. Um, but I don't know where this team is defensively. So there's a lot of question marks for Lake Orion is can they figure it out um, defensively? And that's really where I think that's been where they're biggest Achilles heel is right now is defensively. And, you know, so I'm curious to see where Lake Orion goes from here. Um, obviously, you look at, um, you know, obviously you look at Adams is off to a nice start. Stony Creek's off to a nice start. Um, then, he, obviously, we talk Rochester. Um, you know, so... It'll be interesting to see how um, soccer plays out. I mean, Troy Athens is ranked number two in the state right now for a reason. I think when I look at the best team in the OAA right now in girls soccer, 
It's Troy Athens. And it's not even close. I mean, Rochester could have a say, but I don't know about how they would be after what happened to them against Clarkston. Um, Stony Creek, they, they've been very inconsistent. Um, Adams, we know, have been up and down. So, we'll see. We'll, we'll see with them. I mean, we'll, we will see what happens with them. Um, baseball, you kind of look at, of course, um, you know, you kind of look at what, what happened to, um, you know, Clarkson end up not taking two from Lake Orion, which was shocking. Um, very surprising though. I mean, obviously you look at what the Wolves have done. Um, you know, Clarkson's off to a nice start. Um, and then you look at a team like Seaholm. Now, I owe the folks in Birmingham an apology for this. I owe the Kinney brothers an apology for this. Because I didn't expect Seaholm to come off a... They're on a rapid start right now. I didn't think coming into the year Seaholm would make a ton of noise. And here they are. They're making a ton of noise this year. They're playing really good baseball. They just opened up a new facility. They can play their games at night. They can play their games anytime. And this team has really impressed me to the max right now. I am really impressed with how Seaholm has played. And... I think Seaholm's a team that I don't think anybody wants to see come postseason. I don't think they are. For several reasons. One, they got pitching. Two, they got hitting. Three, you know, they got the intangible. I'm telling you, I think Seaholm, they could make some noise. They could seriously, seriously. Makes the noise in the postseason. Can they threaten Birmingham Brother Rice? Absolutely they can. I mean, when I look at the Warriors, I mean, they look beatable. They look very beatable. So, Seaholm is a team that I think everybody in baseball needs to start paying attention to. Um, Lake Orion, there's, I still with them, I, they're going to be solid. I mean, they, they knocked off Midland. Um, Midland's a, Midland's a good team. Um, you know, but, um, I think with them, I think the Dragons are going to be fine. Um, Clarkston, it'll be interesting to see how they do. I mean, they just came off a nice win, but there were some times they just, they, they just haven't been a consistent team. So when I look at Clarkston, um, you know, we'll see. And then there's West Bloomfield. I mean, West Bloomfield. You know, in baseball, they're always solid. They're always solid. So, when I look at West Bloomfield, um, I think they're a very dangerous team. I think they're going to be a very dangerous team. So, when I look at West Bloomfield, um, you know, the Reds going to be interesting. The White, I still think that division, I'm, I'm now high on the Sea Home bandwagon right now. I'm high on that bandwagon. So... With apologies to Maples Nation. You know what I mean? I owe you guys a big time apology. But I, I for for not doubting you guys. So I owe you guys an apology for that. Um let's go to softball. I mean, Lake Orion, you know what they're you're gonna get from them. They got hitting. They got pitching. Um Stony Creek, they're coming off that loss to Grand Blank. You still have Emily Flynn on that team. Um, that's just Aaron Flynn, my bad. Um, we know how good she is. She's going, um, I think she's going to Detroit. I, I think she's going to Detroit Mercy next year, I think. Um, I gotta see where she's going college-wise, but Stony Creek, for them, if they get offense in that team, look out. I mean, if they find any sort of offense to go along with their pitching and that defense, I mean, with Stony Creek, 
I think for them, it's going to come down to is can, if Flynn gets rocked, Stoney's done for. I mean, that's the bottom line when I look at Stony Creek. If a team gets to Aaron Flynn, if they get to Flynn, Stony Creek's done. I'm not being mean to you, but that's fact. That is absolute fact. I mean, when I look at other teams around the league, I mean, like, you know, they're off the good starts. Um, you know, I haven't really seen a team that's been off to a, you know, off to a torrid start. I mean, you kind of look at the expectation to start of the year in softball. Um, I mean, obviously, you look at Lake Ori and you look at Stony Creek. Both those teams could surprise some people this year. I mean, the problem is when I look at those two teams is they're in the same district. They are in the same district as against each other. And you have two top teams of the state of Michigan that are in the same district. So I wonder what the, when the MHA did is you put those four teams in a district and it's hard to explain that these are the four teams in the district that could make some noise this year. You have two of them that are going to be state ranked. And they're going to have to go through each other in the district final. Most likely. If they have to go in the district semifinal, then how do you describe that? How? How do you describe it? I mean, I saw West Bloomfield the other day. They just got destroyed 14 nothing by Warren Woods Tower. That surprised me. I mean, I get Warren Woods Tower's solid, but for West Bloomfield to lose 14 nothing in that game, it's mind-boggling. It really is. It's really mind-boggling to me. So when I look at, and then and then also you look at Oxford. Oxford's been up and down. Corkston, I don't know what's happened to them. I don't really know what's happened to them. I mean they, I mean they haven't been the same team since the pandemic. Not being mean there. I mean they went through a huge changeover, but they just haven't been the same team since. Um. Then you look at, of course, Troy. I mean, I think Troy's going to be all right. Athens, we know it's going to be all right. Um, you know, Groves, is, Groves has had some moments they look good. Seahomes has had some moments they look good. Um, Berkeley, I think Berkeley's a team to watch for in softball. Royal Oak is another one to watch for. Um, Ferndale's another one to keep an eye on. I mean... You really look at the softball landscape right now, it's interesting. But I still think at the end of the day, the two best teams in the OAA are in the same district. And that is Lake Orion and Stony Creek. Those two teams, you know, the fact that one of those two perennial powerhouses is going to get beat in the Either the district semifinal or the district final. That's a shame. Really is. Really is. Let's go to lacrosse now. Um, when I look at lacrosse, um, I still think when I look at lacrosse, in the OAA, obviously, you look at Clarkston and you look at Lake Orion. Um, those are the two teams there that, you know, Clarkston, with what they did last year, Lake Orion's ranked set in the state right now. They're coming off a really tough loss to Heartland uh, where they lost in overtime. They bounced back, knocked off Birmingham United. Uh, Birmingham United's a really good team. I mean, they're a solid team. But they're a perennial power. I mean, obviously, you look at, you know, Bur I mean, obviously, you look at the powerhouses in, um, in, the, in the state. I mean, the Catholic League has the powerhouses in the state. And you look at, of course, you have Birmingham, um, you have, you have, um, Birmingham Brother Rice, 
and you have nobody to Detroit Catholic Central. The two perennial powerhouses. You know? So, I get on Twitter, a lot of people complain a lot about, you know, the perennial powerhouses winning the state championship. You know, Birmingham Brother Rice, nobody to Detroit Catholic Central. Only one public school league team is public school team has done it. Um, that's Heartland. Of course, Heartland knocked off Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, I think that was two years ago. And you know, so that's gonna be interesting to see. Um, is there gonna be a team that can step up against the Birmingham Brother Rice or a Novi Detroit Catholic Central? You don't know that. I mean, we don't know that. So there's a lot of questions. And I mean a lot of questions. Um, And then you look at on, um, you know, and then you look at, of course, the um, up and coming teams. You look at an Adams. Adams, you know, we don't know where they stand. Stony Creek, we don't know where they stand. Um, You know, a Bloomfield Hills. I mean, we talked Birmingham United already. We talked Troy. Um, Troy Athens. Um, you know, we, um, you know, even Oxford, I mean, Oxford lacrosse, I mean, you know, so we'll see what happens. There's just so many questions when you look at lacrosse right now, but until then, the jury's out <laughs> right now on lacrosse. The two best teams right now are Clarks in the OA are Clarkston and Lake Orion. Those are the two teams right now. Um, then it's everyone else. So, we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. On the girls' side, um, you kind of look at Birmingham United, Bloomfield Hills, Lake Orion. Um, I'm curious to see Oxford. I'm curious to see Clarkston. Can both these teams, you know, and I can, um, It'll be interesting to see who steps up the plate. I mean, who challenges who. I mean, you look at the west side of the state, you look at a team like Rockford, who's been a perennial power. Um, Rockford's been a team that really, they surprise people. Um, they're a juggernaut. Um, then you look at Grand, at Grand Rapids schools, you look at, um, you know, and I think, you know, the west side of the state, they've had their way. But a team to really watch for in girls lacrosse has been Brighton. Brighton, obviously, they played Bloomfield Hills on in their home field in the state semifinals. Um, unfortunately for them, it hasn't gone well for them. Um, when they go to when they go to Brighton to play Brighton. I mean, you're virtually... It'll be interesting to see. I mean, like, and then obviously you look at a team like Lake Orion... Who's going to have to deal with Heartland almost every year in their regional? Um, and we know how good Heartland is. I mean, Heartland's always, always good. I mean, they're always tough to beat in girls lacrosse. So, and then now they just added that new turf field to their stadium. And that's going to make them, I think, probably even more harder. I mean, last few years they've had to play on grass. And... You know, now they get to play on turf. So, it'll be very interesting to see how, um, you know, how girls lacrosse is. And I think, obviously, when you look at it right now, um, you know, I still think, you know, you look at Bloomfield Hills, they're still the top dog in the OA. Um, then it's Birmingham United. Then I would put Lake Orion in that conversation. <laughs> so, we'll see. How it goes. We'll, we will see how it goes. Um, and then we have golf. I mean, I've seen some golf um, around the league as well. Um, Troy Athens is solid. I mean, I think Troy Athens and Rochester Adams are two teams that I think could do some damage this year. I would put Clarks in that conversation as well. Um, I think when you look at the Red Hawks, they're, they're, I mean, like, we just had the Masters. Um, of course, um, I mean, like, um, we just had the Masters, and obviously, I, it kind of got me thinking about golf a little bit, because we're in the thick of golf season, 
and they've gotten some, you know, and obviously you look at, I think it was Steve Stricker who won it. Um, um, I, I can't remember the names of my tongue right now, but obviously he's a Dallas Stars fan. Of course, you know, in the Dallas, and we're thinking Stanley Cup playoffs coming up. And I'm curious to see how my Dallas Stars do in that, um, in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, so if you ever see my Twitter feed at Saginaw Bay, I, I post a lot of Dallas Stars stuff because you know how big of a fan I am of the Dallas Stars. And, you know, and I know there's a lot of Detroit Red Wing fans who watch this podcast and, you know, I, and I wish them the best of luck if they get to the postseason. So, but back to golf. And I think obviously Troy Athens has really impressed me with the way that they have handled, you know, they played well. I mean, they're, they knocked off a top team in Lake Orion. Um, they are, they're a dangerous team. I think Troy Athens, they could make some noise in golf this season. They could make some noise, especially in the postseason. So I'm curious to see how things are going to look um, in golf. I'm curious to see how this team's going to look um, in the future. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens. Um, but. Troy Athens right now, I would say, is the top team in golf right now. I would put Lake Orion still in that conversation. I put Clark's in that conversation. Um, I would put, um, you know, I would put um, Troy in that conversation. So there's a lot of teams that I would put in that conversation where they're going to make some noise and really some things to keep an eye on. Um, over there as we get into the middle and especially come postseason time um, in the middle part and the little to late parts of May that to really look at when you look at um, when you look at where everybody's at. So a lot to look at. Really a lot to look at. Um, then let's go to, um, you know, then let's go to, um, you no know, tennis. Um, obviously, you look at Bloomfield Hills, you look at Troy, you look at Seaholm, but the number one team in tennis has been shocking me. It's Clarkston. So when I look at the Wolves, I'm like, I'm looking at the ranks and saying, like, how is Clarkston ranked number one in tennis right now? So especially when you have proven powerhouse teams like Seaholm, um, who's in Division Two for tennis, Groves, who's in Division Two for tennis. But Troy's in there. Bloopia Hills is in there. So, how does it? How do you explain that to me? That Clarkson's ranked number one right now in tennis. Then you have Rochester Adams, who's another perennial power in tennis. I mean, you know. So it's kind of surprising to see from me that Clarkson's ranked um, number one in the state right now in tennis. I mean. Considering you had Troy in there, you kind of have Adams in there. You have Stony Creek, um, who's also in there. So it's shocking to me to see that that Clarkson is ranked number one in girls tennis right now. I mean, it, it, I just don't get it right now. I just don't understand it. But there they are, ranked number one. When I read the um updated state rankings, um, so really interesting to see how um. You know, how everything's been going around spring sports. Um, I think some, you know, obviously there's some key meets to watch this week, obviously. Some key invitations to keep an eye on as well. Um, you know, when you look at, of course, the, um, when you look at other teams um, around the league, obviously, um, you know, I'm going back to track and field for a minute here. Um, teams I'm keeping an eye on this week in track and field, um, I'm keeping a close eye on Clarkston. And the reason why I keep an eye on the Wolves is I look at Clarkston and they're balanced this year. I mean, I know the direction that they're, um, that they like to go. Um, I'm curious to see how Clarkson does this season, especially what they got. Um, they got a proven thrower, Nick Wachensko, who's a really good thrower. Um, 
Then I'm also curious to see how their girls is. I mean, Clarkson girls. I mean, curious to see how they do. Um, Lake Orion and Clarkson could be a really interesting track meet um, on Wednesday. That could be a really interesting meet um, between those two teams. Um, obviously, you look at, and then, of course, you look at, um, you know, a team like Rochester. We know how good Rochester is. Um, Royal Oak, they're, they're balanced. Um, I know in the girls, everybody says about Oak Park, um, you know, the ability for them to recruit. And, you know, I know Coach Giles does a nice job of that, but, you know, do I agree with, it, with his methods at times? Probably not. But he does find a way to win. And I'll be curious to see how Oxford does going forward. And I'll be curious to see how Oak Park does going forward. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens um, going forward there. Um, when I look at other teams around the league, obviously, um, you know, I mean, like, um, you know, I'm curious to see how Royal Oak does. I think Royal Oak out of the, um, gold division, they're the most balanced group. I know, um, I, I like what they do over there at Royal Oak. Um, Troy is another team I'm watching carefully. So we'll see what happens. See what happens. Um, before I, before I sign off here, um, obviously you look at, um, you know, you really look at some teams here around the league, um, to keep an eye on. Um, I know I talked a lot about football. Of course, we talked about A&T, um, some basketball news, obviously, um, to keep an eye on, um, curious to see who is the new head coach at Rochester. I haven't really heard anything else yet from anywhere else. So if I do find out, um, just send me, send me like an email or a text or anything like that. Um, because I need confirmation. I mean, I like that confirmation for the blog at second before this fifty at blogspot.com. Um, but really, some off season stuff to keep an eye on. Um, you know, you look at basketball coming up. I mean, like, um, you know, obviously you got their AAU season right now. Then you got um, you know, summer league stuff starting up. So we'll see what happens. So, we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, man, I'm signing off here. Uh, make sure you follow the blog at Saturday by 450 at blogspot.com. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you all next week, everybody. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you all next week. God bless all.